In 1982, a woman came in to see me with typical problems with menopause, um, hot flashes and night sweats and a little depression and easily emotional and so forth. Um, she said she wanted hormone replacement. Now, I thought I was a natural medicine doctor. Okay, it's 1982, so I started to write out a prescription. Now, she must have been a school teacher because she could read upside down, and she read what I was writing, and she said, uh, isn't that a prescription for Premarin? I said, well, yeah. She said, well, I wanted natural hormones. Now, of course, they told me in medical school that horses were natural, and so Premarin is from horses. Um, she said, no, 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 no. She says, I want the same kind of hormones that I had in me when I was 30. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe she said 35, but somewhere in there. Um, and she said, there's some of those hormones that are in horses that aren't in people. Isn't that so? Well, yeah, she was right. But I had to tell her that there was no such thing on the market anywhere. It wasn't available. All there's available is this horse hormone stuff. Well... She acted kind of like my wife. She looked at me and said, I'm sure you can do something about that. Okay. Um, I told her I possibly could. So she talked about a few other things and then she got up to leave and she says, I'll be back in a couple, three months and see what progress you've made. Well, that was a challenge because literally the hormones identical to human were not on the market. So. I went back to the textbook and sure enough it said, remember this is 1982, so it discussed the what are called the three classical estrogens. Now there literally are dozens of estrogens, but these are the ones that were mostly researched at the time. It said women have these three and those are the ones that are there up to menopause and these are the natural estrogens and of course there's progesterone too. Um, but after the menopause we should give them horse hormones. I thought, well, gee, she's right. That's kind of a logical disconnect, isn't it? Um, so where can I get a supply of those three? So I started calling around to the very few compounding pharmacists there were in the United States at the time. There weren't very many. None of them had them. I finally located in Canada Cripps Pharmacy and a very resourceful pharmacist by the name of Ed Thorpe. And Ed said, you know, I think I can find those. I'll get back to you. So a few weeks later, he calls back and says, well, I got them. Now, how much of each one do you want? Oh, okay. So I had to go back to the books and I didn't find anything there. There were discussions of what the hormones were, but not of the quantities or the proportions, because there's three of them. So there, I called around to various testing laboratories. Well, when you test women for, with blood tests for different estrogens, what do you find? What do you find? What do you find? Most laboratories tested for two of the three estrogens. They're called estrone and estradiol, but they didn't check for the third one, which is called estriol. They said, oh, that's only important during pregnancy. But there were two laboratories that actually did test, and I asked them, please send me your results. So we just got the results with the ranges of normal, and it actually turned out that they were finding more estriol than the other two hormones. So all we did was we copied nature, which is always a basic principle. And their normal ranges for the different estrogens had been derived from testing a lot of ladies. So we just copied that. We thought, all right, well, we should have 10% of this one and 10% of that one and 80% of this one because that's what's found in these tests. And here's the quantity. And so I called Ed Thorpe back in Vancouver. That's Vancouver, British Columbia and said, well, we want this much and we want these proportions, and he put together the very first bioidentical hormone combination used in North America. Now, I've discovered since then that there was somebody in Scandinavia who used two of the hormones put together about that same time, but for North America, he put together the first combination of the three estrogens, and then, using that principle of always copy nature, because remember, Women, we wouldn't be here if nature didn't have it right. So we use the same hormones in the same quantities in the same proportions, and we ask people to use them on a cycle. It's not that we wanted everybody to have menstrual periods till they're 90, but still, we want to time it like nature does, and we put in progesterone, because that's what nature does, and we put in a little bit of testosterone, because that's what nature does. 
and that's worked wonderfully well since the early 1980s. That was 1982. Didn't go around to writing a book about it till 1997. At that time, we had to send everybody's prescriptions to Canada, and they mailed them all to the States. And now there are over a thousand compounding pharmacies all around the United States who will supply that same combination. You'll find it's still the majority prescription out there. And see, if I could have patented it, I could have been a patent medicine company and made a whole bunch of money. But we didn't patent it. It's called triple estrogen. And there's another combination that has two of those estrogens that's uh, the second most widely prescribed estrogen. And it's combined with progesterone and combined with a little bit of testosterone. So that's why, I guess, I get the credit for putting that together, because I sort of did. But we can blame a lot of it on a lady who didn't think she was a horse. <laughs>